In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare plant samples for high throughput genotyping using the Sigma Extract and Amp method. Show you how to punch plants and get them in an ordered fashion from this flat, which is numbered, into this uh, PCR plate that is also numbered. Here, Sarah, Sarah is going to um, work on a group of 92 plants. All of the groups are going to be 92 plants. And she's going to work from um, 277 all the way through 368. And on these flats, these things are numbered like a book where that, that, that plant is 200 and then this plant is 400 here. Um, and our plate here is also going to be numbered as a book, of course. They have a different capacity and we will be given a key where you can see here that here our first well is 277 and we end with 368 and you'll also be given a plate with solution in it that will be sealed with plastic wrap and you can see if the glare if we don't have too much glare that the first well is 277 um, the first well, uh, the well on the right is 288, and then your final well here will be 368. The last four wells will be reserved for a control. Anyway, Sarah is going to show you now how, how we're going to do this punching procedure. So first, Sarah is opening up just the first row. We'll keep the whole plate closed other than what we're working on. And then we have, she's going to punch against clean paper towels um, so that we don't cross-contaminate. Cross-contaminating of plants is the only thing we're worried about. We're not worried about getting our skin. We're not worried about getting dirt. I mean, these plants are grown on dirt. What we're worried about is cross-contaminating plant to plant. And here she has a capillary tube. Why don't you show the, the vial? See, it came from this vial. It's a little piece of glass that will make a little punch. I'm going to try to get a good camera angle. She's going to put the... Hold on one second, Sarah. Let's see how close I can get and get it focused. I guess that's as good as I can get. Um, yeah, go ahead. She puts the paper towel behind there. And puts the capillary and You do a twisting motion, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and now you'll see there's a little hole. I'm going to try to get in close so my camera will focus doesn't want to focus perfectly but there's a little hole on the plant and then if you look at this we'll put it against the white um, you'll see that there is a little put it put it uh, horizontal you'll see there's a little bit of green yeah you'll see there's a little bit of green stuck in there that's a little leaf disc and that's going to get dropped into the appropriate well and just sit there like that now there's, against a white background, it's easy to see that you have a green disc in there. If you want to see the liquid, whether you have liquid in your well, you might hold it up to the light or you may put it against a black background. Go ahead. And you can see here that that, that area right there is where she punched against. Um, she's pointing at it. It's a little bit green, so you're not going to punch against that area again. I'm going to move down the, okay. down the paper towel. All right, let's go ahead and do this whole row. Cool. We got two. Continue.
Yeah, this is hard, so we have to keep the order. Sarah's doing a great job of checking to make sure we have the order correct. It's not so hard because you will notice a little hole in your in your plan, so you'll kind of know which one you did last, and you'll have a capillary tube hanging out in the in the PCR well um, that you just put it in. So by this system, we won't mix up stuff very well, very easily. Say that again. I like to switch out my paper towels often. Yeah, smart. So that one I lost the uh, the disc. So I'm just gonna redo it. Yeah, it's important to actually have a disc that you transfer. It's desirable not to damage the plants too much, but we need to get something that we can get DNA from. Sometimes the discs get stuck to the paper towel and then fall off. All right, so that's all of them. Now Sarah's going to remove the discs. You grab a transfer pipette. And she's going to move the capillary tube out of the liquid, but with still within the well. And just try to get it out of the... And so to do this, did you go? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. So let's see the capillary tube first of all. So if we look at the capillary tube now, we're getting the focus, there's no leaf disc in there. That's going to be your best sign that the disc is, is gone. In the plate, we'll see if we can. You can see a little green thing in that well there. Okay. The important thing is now not to suck um, suck stuff into the capillary, it's rather to blow it out. And so again, out of the liquid just slightly, attach it on and blow gently until the disc comes out. If you, if you squeeze your fingers, I'm gonna, if you squeeze your fingers on the thing, do not release your fingers because that will suck up without while you're on the capillary tube if you want to release it take it away from the capillary tube to release to have the suction just been. Sometimes the disc will be unfriendly and not want to come out. Got it? Got it. Alright. Now all of the all of the first row has um, leaf discs in there and you can see a little bit of green in there. Um, sorry with the camera angle. Um, 
But now we're going to cap these guys. It's not important to have the disc on the very bottom because we're going to spin this down very hard uh, prior to doing the heat step. And we're going to use uh, strip caps that are, that are 12. Um, we don't have them right at the moment, uh, so we're going to improvise with 8. Uh, but we have we have the 12 ones coming in the order. You need scissors. Do you have scissors? Again, it doesn't matter to be sterile or anything like that. It's a. It might not work very well, but yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut off that end. Again, we're improvising with the eight strips that we have right now. We'll have 12 strips later. Um, and so now you'll easily know that you have finished the first row and now it'll be time to peel back the plastic wrap to the next row um, and continue. After the PCR plate or the, um, the DNA extraction plate is finished, you'll notice that not all the discs are at the bottom of the wells and not even all the solution is at the bottom of the wells. So now we'll go and we'll spin this down in the centrifuge so everything is collected to the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to spin these guys down and we'll come to our, our uh, thermo uh, centrifuge. And it has a plate rotor in it right here. And go ahead, Sarah, you can load that guy in there. And then, of course, we have to balance it. And we don't need to spin for a very long time, so go ahead and close that. And press start. We'll let this get up to at least a thousand G or so. It'll go up to about 2,500 25, G. That's to be good enough. Everything is going to be nicely collected in the bottom. Yeah, I think there we go. So you can see the liquid and the, the leaf discs are all now at the bottom. Once all the discs are spun down, then we just have to heat them and for 95 degrees for uh, 10, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Do that in the thermocycler. All right. So after these guys are heated, we need to add the dilution, the dilution buffer from Sigma. Sarah's going to be smart, and she's only going to open up what she's going to pipette in. And here are your whole row of 12 at once. We have the, we have the dilution buffer aliquoted in, in this. We're using this plate as a, as a reservoir. You could use a reservoir as well as a reservoir, but this works. And she's going to try not really hard to not touch. Um, the wells and just shoot it in so that we can use the same tips. There we go. Mm -hmm. Pretty happy with that. And we'll set this off to the side, cap that up, and off to the next, off to the next row. Again, we would have soon. We'll have uh, twelve. 12 strip caps instead of eight. We, today we were, we were short, short of supplies. All right. Now that the dilution solution has, the dilution buffer has been added, we just quickly spin this down to collect all the liquid on the bottom. The camera doesn't capture swirling very well on a vortex, but you need to see the, you need to see your solution move. If you see it move, it's mixed down again and we're ready and then we'll be ready to use this as a template for our for our um, genotyping reactions